You know, if I'm playing a match on Wednesday, I take my bick and shave down on this cheek. If it's a semi-final, I shave up. But if it's a month with an R, I take my bick and go across. Except on Tuesday, of course, when I start on my chin. All this might give you the idea I'm superstitious. No way. It doesn't matter which bick I use. Superstitious? Nah. Superstitious or not, avoid all shavers with more than three letters. Like it or not, winter's coming. You gotta winterize your car at Nationwide. After all, what's confidence worth when you're carrying passengers with special disease? Hi there, Pop. It's time to change your antifreeze, and Nationwide has everything you need. Like Prestone antifreeze for just $3.99 a gallon. But buy two gallons, ten for a $2 rebate, making your cost just $2.99 a gallon. Take the road to confidence. Nationwide, your low-price, good advice auto parts store. We've, we've kicked Tim Foley out of the booth here. I have a window. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're not punishing you a great deal. Tim got a little reckless up here, former defensive back and all. We made him stand on the other side of the barricade. Watch out. I'll, I can close my door here. Beautiful afternoon <laughs> in Commonwealth Stadium. We're having a good time with SEC football. Hope you are, too. The Kentucky Wildcats will have a better time if they can score some points. They're trailing 20 to nothing. McCluskey breaks it outside. The tackling bunch breaks other tackles. Sexton, who was way back there, McCluskey ran a great deal of the distance without a shoe. Kentucky does a nice job at the point of the attack. It looks like Thompson stuffed the play, and McCluskey broke it back to the weak side and started breaking tacklers. Where is he? Oh, there he comes. Sexton just trying to buy time here as Jacobs comes back and Tony Mays comes back to help make the play. Wildcats could only get a part of his shoe. Big ramble, 41 yards. Off to the right side for about four down near the 30 yard line. Lars Tate carrying the ball and David Thompson with a stop for Kentucky. Well, Georgia just keeps coming up with something from somebody you don't expect. First, nobody expected Andre Smith to run off a bunch of long runs as he did earlier in the year and even last week against Vanderbilt. Then McCluskey plays a little bit more for Smith today because of Smith's sore calf and Achilles. Now McCluskey leading the team in special teams tackle since rips off a 41 yard run out of the fullback position. Second down six, Georgia from the 32 of Kentucky. Scott Williams in motion. Lars Tate running room to the 24-yard line. And a first down. Here's some scores from college football today. Wisconsin leading Ohio State in the rain at halftime. Being played in Madison. Boston College back out in front of Rutgers, 21-10. That had been tied 7-7 earlier. North Carolina State leading Clemson, 24-21 in the second quarter. And South Carolina and East Carolina, 7-7. That game just underway. The South Carolina Gamecocks of Joe Morrison undefeated going into the East Carolina game today. Here's Dukes on a first and 10 from the 25. Has his man down there, Archie, but he couldn't hit him. And actually, Archie was in a very narrow seam between Mays and Calhoun. The play they've been running, they've hit Williams a few times in the flat trying to draw up the short coverage man on Williams and throw it in over his head, but there was really nothing there. Dukes just appeared to throw that one out of bounds. Well, David Dukes this afternoon, 7 out of 13 for 86 yards. No touchdowns, no interceptions. He's been running this Georgia offense, though, by getting the ball to those backs and not turning it over thus far. Second down, 10. Georgia from the 25. Here comes Hockaday in motion for 85. Lars Tate. About the 22 or 23, and he stopped there. Just 40 seconds remaining in the third quarter, as you see it tick down. I don't know if you can say enough about this Georgia offensive line. As you mentioned, they have they're, they're out producing Herschel's uh, results to this point last year. Isn't that correct? And Herschel's uh, Heisman Trophy year of 82. Right, and, and McCluskey is running well, as did Andre Smith. That tells me something. They got places to go. There's holes there. Third down eight from the 22. Tron Jackson, they love this sweep. This time, Jackson bottled up and knocked out of bounds at the line of scrimmage. And in will come Kevin Butler. The line of scrimmage is going to be about the 23. It'll be about a 40-yard attempt for Butler if, in fact, that's what the Georgia Bulldogs decide to do. That's the end of the third quarter. Georgia leads 20 to nothing over Kentucky. This is Turner Network Television. In my
my travels, I've been fortunate to see some of the true wonders on this earth. But few have impressed me as much as the fascination and understanding contained in the world of Audubon. It's a breathtaking program that opens your eyes to a magnificent world where you play the most important role. Join me for the world of Audubon. See the world of Audubon's encore presentation Sunday at 5.35 Eastern on Superstation WTBS. He was a loner looking out for number one. Making money out of war is almost an act of nature. Selling his wares to the highest bidder. I warn you, I'm a Mexican national. Doing business with the Yanks. But this time, he's gone too far. You about ready to leave? Not under your terms. William Olden is Alvarez Kelly. Tonight at 8.05 p.m. Eastern on Superstation WTBS. Portions of today's game are brought to you by Canon. Quality cameras and photographic equipment so advanced. Canon is the world's leader in 35 millimeter photography. Nikki Nichols, our booth manager, she's the one who actually threw Tim out for being a little rambunctious here, creating a little more room, doing her usual great job up here at Commonwealth Stadium. What a... What You've a got so many helpers, I don't have any room. <laughs> <laughs> I need all that I can get, as you well know. 39-yard <laughs> field goal attempt by Kevin Butler. It is good. Kevin Butler, three out of four field goal kicking today for Georgia, kicking with that sore right leg. They did not expect him to play, and he pumped up nine points. He now has 326 points as he continues his assault on the all-time scoring record. By the way, the NCAA, as you look at the scores, the NCAA record is 356 points. Georgia Tech leading Tennessee. That's in the second quarter being played in Atlanta. Vanderbilt out in front of Ole Miss, 7-0 in the first quarter. These are all SEC scores. By the way, Kurt Page threw the touchdown pass to running back Carl Woods for the Vanderbilt touchdown. That being played in Nashville. I was going to say, Tim, do you remember who holds the NCAA all-time scoring record? Now, I have it in front of me. You don't, so... He's now a pro football player and wears the same number as George Adams of Kentucky. Franco Nagurski. Good. <laughs> That's wrong, but it's good. How about Tony Dorsett? Tony Dorsett. You knew. You were ah, just, yeah, you're giving kidding. me a chance. There's the big blue rag. It is damp with tears this afternoon. As Kentucky trails Georgia 23 to nothing with 14.57 left in this football game. So we were just adding up Kevin Butler's points. As you look at the Kentucky kick returners, they are Adams and Logan. Uh, Butler had 317 coming in today, has uh, 9, 10 more, so he has 327 points on the day. Matter of fact, he has 11 on the day. Here is Mark Logan. Gets a good block. Finds a seat to the 33-yard line. Excellent job of blocking and running by Mark Logan. Logan's a sophomore from Lexington, hometown youngster. Randy Jackson made the stop for the Georgia Bulldogs. Kentucky isn't through yet. They almost came up with a very, very big play here as Logan tries to get to his left return. George Adams gets a semblance of a block, and then Logan breaks one tackle, cuts it upfield, a couple of nice blocks by Kentucky. Finally cornered by a Georgia Bulldog. Rand to one first and ten to 23. Got a good block back there. Throws on the run. Incomplete. Trying to get it over there to number 80, Mark Wheeler, who wanted an interference call. None was forthcoming. Tony Flack covering on the play. Georgia had some good fortune on that play. It looked there was like there was some confusion in their secondary, and they ended up with one extra man to the wide side of the field where the play was directed. There's the scoring drive for the Bulldogs. 54-yard seven plays and the 39-yard field goal by Kevin Butler. So today he has a 34-yard field goal, a 39-yard field goal, and a 33. He missed a 41-yarder wide to the right earlier. Mark Higgs, number 22, the freshman. Not across the 30 to the 31. He didn't even get back to the original line of scrimmage. And now Henry Harris has penetrated at nose guard to make the stop. By the way, about two commercials ago, if you're 
keeping count. We, when we went away, you saw a good close-up on the sideline of the team doctors for Georgia and trainers working on the knee of number 99, Jake Richardson, who seems to be shaken up in this game. And 52, Henry Harris, the sophomore, is playing nose guard. Harris had started. Richardson took that job from Harris. Now Richardson is apparently injured to some degree. We'll check on it for you. Manzo throws incomplete to Cisco Bryant. The diving attempt would have been good for the first down, but it brings up fourth, and in will come Paul Calhoun for his eighth punt of the afternoon. Jerry talking to the coaches upstairs, telling them we have to get something going. And uh, maybe they're discussing personnel at this particular point or play selection. There's a beauty from Calhoun. to cover on the play, number 48. Cam Jacobs, who's made some special teams plays today, as did Jimmy Harrell, had a 76-yard punt return touchdown run earlier today. This is Turner Network Television. Panasonic introduces a new lightweight video system that's so automatic, it works by itself. The Panasonic video camera focuses by itself, adjusts for changing light by itself, even works in extreme low light all by itself. This Panasonic VHS recorder connects almost by itself and plays back a jitter-free picture in slow motion and stop motion. Put in a pre-recorded movie, and this Panasonic gives you hi-fi sound through your stereo. Sound so far superior to ordinary TV, it stands out by itself. Panasonic video system, just slightly ahead of our time. a Kentucky youngster enjoying the afternoon, not enjoying the game. And Kentucky has two linebackers in there, 58 Zach and 39 Urano for the first time in the game together. Kramer and Jacobs are out for some reason for Kentucky. Out of the linebacking spot. About three yards for Lars Tate right up the middle. By the way, Jake Richardson, the nose guard for Georgia, has a sprained knee. That's why he is out of the game and Harris is in. And there he is. Matter of fact, you can see Jake Richardson with his Brains right knee, very personable young man. We've got to know the last couple of three weeks. He wants our producer Skip Ellison to be sure to get that Turner Broadcasting T-shirt in the mail to them. I hope he's okay with his brain knee over there too. Second down, six. Georgia from the 28-yard line. The Bulldogs. They lead 23 to nothing. Lane in motion. 13-15 to go in the game. Oops. Number 37, Gordon Jackson with the tackle. Blaylock with that touchdown last week. Had one catch and one touchdown before he came into the game today. Now he has two catches and one touchdown. Well, when you're covering home run Blaylock, you have to give him a lot of room. You're always concerned about the deep pattern. Here he shows some foot quickness, breaks it off, works himself free, and makes a nice reception. He's a track star who's become a football player, hasn't played since high school, but as Tim pointed out earlier, he is also obviously a football player with his football talent. Beyond just speed, Lars Tate does not uh, get to call it because they call a dead ball penalty. That's often illegal procedure. The time clock did not run down. There were six seconds left. We'll get the call here. There it is, illegal procedure against Georgia. Mac Gentry, the official who's making the call today. So the Kentucky Wildcats went 5-0. Then they ran into LSU. A lot of folks picked to win the SEC. Dead ball! Illegal procedure! Offense! Now they have run into a buzzsaw called the Georgia Bulldogs. Bulldogs now have 62, 83, 85 points in the last seven quarters of play with 62 versus Vanderbilt last week. And Vince Dooley still looks worried. First down 15 from the 37. And off to David McCluskey. 
to the 49-yard line and a little bit more. Close to the first down, Gordon Jackson with a stop for Kentucky. And you saw 63 Mike Weaver there, the right tackle. Watch the blocking on this play. There's Pete Anderson, 64, firing out. Keith Johnson, 61, getting him blocked. Here goes McCluskey. Brian Williams gives him a lick. Going to try and wrap him up. Finally, Gordon Jackson just yanks him to the ground. Linebacker Cam Jacobs, number 48, back in there for Kentucky now. He's come out for a while. Second down, two. Georgia with their power formation up to 49. Here's Lars Pate, first down, Georgia. To the 45-yard line. We've had Tron Jackson, Lars Tate, Tony Mangrum all alternating at the tailback position for Georgia this afternoon. Lars Tate has 37 yards on the day. Mangrum has 35 yards on the day. Jackson has 24. We'll get our statistician, David Carroll, to add those up and uh, add the tailback yardage up for us. We'll tell you exactly how the tailbacks are doing. It's kind of like uh, the uh, Herschel Walker replacement core. They said it would take two or three, <laughs> but whatever works. First and ten. Bulldogs. McCluskey. Pops it up the middle. Spinning and twisting his way for about eight or nine yards. This would be a good time to talk a little bit about Kim Stevens. He is the, he's a freshman, and he's only the second freshman ever to start for Georgia, as you watch David McCluskey running behind one of his blocks. The only other one was Tim Morrison back in 1977. He's just done a fantastic job mixing in there with Pete Anderson, who's the leader, and Jimmy Holton. Second down to Georgia at the 38 of Kentucky now. It's to Lars Tate. Look out! To the two-yard line goes Lars Tate. A gain of 36 yards. Knocked off by Russell Harrison. First and two on the two, and that sent the people toward the gate. The man who had stepped in there and looked as though he was going to take that tailback job was freshman Cleveland Gary. And he's been injured with a foot injury lately. The whistle sounds again before the ball was snapped. And they brought in Jackson, Tate, and Mangrum because Gary hasn't been able to play the last two games. And now, all of a sudden, the other freshman, Lars Tate, is showing what he can do. Delay! Offense! That may go into the Guinness Book of Records, though, Bob, as the widest hole ever created by an offensive line. What was the previous record? Do you remember? Can't be much more than 53 yards, right? <laughs> Kentucky's, they're fighting to stay alive. They're fighting and scratching and pursuing, and if one man gets cut off in a situation like that, it creates a large gap. So the Bulldogs lead 23 nothing, 10-16 remaining in the game. First down goal. to about the three. Close to a first down. Oh, it's down to about the three. It'll be up a second down. First down would be about six yards deep. The I wanted to mention that a lot of the folks are leaving Commonwealth Stadium here this afternoon. The Wildcats getting beaten uh, by 23 and perhaps by even more in a moment. It's the last day of racing at Keeneland. Some may be headed out to try to get in a couple of horse races, see if they can be more lucky than they have been as Wildcat fans today. Lars Tate. Touchdown! Tate's third touchdown of the year. Just watch him again, but behind the right side of that line, Mike Weaver just collapses it in there as Anderson pulls the trap down in there close knocks them out of there the Lars Tate gets the touchdown he has 75 yards rushing this afternoon to lead all rushers in the ball game and Georgia leads 29 to nothing Kevin Butler Boy, and 30 to nothing Butler has 12 points on the day 
He's moving toward that all-time NCAA scoring record of 356 points. We'll be back to Commonwealth Stadium in just a moment. Can anyone here name a copier maker that's bigger than Rico? Xerox. Rico's bigger. IBM? Rico's bigger. And we got to be bigger than Xerox by making a full line of copiers that win top marks for quality, like this Rico 6080 console copier. What a revelation. Now, are you still overlooking Rico and the Rico 6080? Call Rico. We respond. Have you tasted what's making America say? It's here! All here at Hardee's. Have you tasted how a biscuit's done the Hardee's way? It's here! It's all here at Hardee's. Introducing cinnamon and raisin biscuits, our original homemade rise and shine recipe. Now with cinnamon and plump juicy raisins, then iced with a smooth glaze. Sweeten up your day with new cinnamon and raisin biscuits. It's here! Georgia here at Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington. Let's look at some other college football after the kickoff here. We'll take a look at some scores. By the way, in this second half of play, Kentucky has only five net yards rushing. If you look at the Bulldogs scoring drive, five yards rushing the ball in the entire second half. Bill Lewis has done an excellent job for the last four years coordinating the defense for Georgia and Got another fine group of athletes out there today. And Rusty Gillespie, who's been doing a great job kicking the ball off for Georgia this afternoon in place of the injured Butler, kicks this one out of bounds. Let's look at the scores while they mark off the five and bring it back. There, South Carolina leading East Carolina 14-10 in the second quarter. Quarterback Mike Holt of South Carolina on his first play in the ball game at Ira Hillary for a 71-yard TD. Army leading Syracuse 13-7 in the second quarter. See if I can talk any faster to get these in. Tennessee beat Georgia Tech 10-7, leads Georgia Tech 10-7 in the second quarter. Tony Robinson scored the touchdown. Ole Miss and Vanderbilt tied 7-7, and Wansley with a one-yard run to tie it up for Ole Miss, and Kurt Page through to Carl Woods for Vanderbilt for the Commodore score, and it's tied in Nashville. Gillespie now from the 35-yard line. George Adams at the four. Looking for the wall. Out to the 28-yard line. And that's where Kentucky gets the ball with nine minutes and 16 seconds left. Attempting to avert a shutout here at their home field this afternoon. Georgia has shut out Kentucky five times over the years. Last time back in 81. From the 27, Jerry Adams, the running back from that split back set. Randall, it's Jerry again. Jerry falls forward to the 35 yard line for a gain of about eight on the screen pass to the left side. Actually, just a short toss from the left. Number 29, Will Jones, with the tackle. Jerry looks a little banged up. He's going to come off. And in comes 29, Tom Weary. I believe Chris Jerry's been playing in pain ever since the first quarter. And there's a penalty against Georgia, as you just heard, from referee Mac Gentry. One thing I think that uh, Jerry Claiborne and his coaches have succeeded in doing here is, is creating a program that, that does possess some pride. And these guys are still fighting out there, still hammering away, trying to get on the board, haven't given up hope yet. And I think that's the, that's the main thrust of what he's trying to establish. Weary and Logan in the backfield on a first down 10. It's complete to Logan. He gets a block. Needed to turn it outside. I'm sure he'd like to have had that opportunity again, but still gets it to the 43 of Georgia. Kentucky first down. You saw that Vanderbilt score with Ole Miss in SEC action. Vanderbilt leads 14-7 now. And that last Vanderbilt touchdown came on a one-yard run by Kurt Page. Vince Dooley will have to smile here soon, leading 30 to nothing with 8.40 left. He's smiling on the inside. From the 44 of Georgia, first down, Bill Ransel. 
Nice grab in traffic by Mark Logan, and there's a penalty marker down. Boswell with a tackle. Penalty marker down at the 38-yard line of Georgia. We get Boswell for a little pass interference, a little early contact there, trying to lock up man-to-man -man with Logan. I think it's harder to cover a back coming out of the backfield than it is to cover a wide receiver sometimes. The back has so many different ways to go on you. Claiborne awfully disappointed, I'm sure, in his team's performance today. But this Georgia team is going to run away from a lot of folks this year. Let's see if we can spot the pass interference on 44 Boswell early contact here. Little man-to-man -man coverage, trying to sit on inside. Logan does a little twist and pirouette, and uh, Steve Boswell's got a little Fred Astaire action going with him before the ball arrives. That was dancing move. He's going to give him a little twirl there, wasn't right, he? Yeah. <laughs> Would you like to dance? <laughs> First down, 10 Kentucky at the 38 after the interference penalty. Now they're saying the center for Kentucky, Petroviak, moved the ball. We were talking about Kentucky struggling here. They won their first five games, lost badly to LSU last week with nine Get turnovers. Five yards against Kentucky here. Now, Kentucky has a chance to get well next week as they entertain North Texas State here at Lexington. Then they have to play Vanderbilt here, then Florida here, and then Tennessee at Knoxville. So with five victories on the season, you look at that schedule, you can see where Kentucky could pick up possibly a couple of more victories, maybe even more, and get seven or eight wins on the year. Kentucky had eight wins last year, went to the Hall of Fame Bowl, and lost to West Virginia. So they may go bowling again if they can get a couple more victories stacked onto the five they have now. Ransville looking for Pitt. Incomplete out of bounds at the 20-yard line. Really getting into scheduling uh, situations now, Tim, in the Southeastern Conference race. Uh, a lot of people are picking LSU, and they say that one of the reasons is because Florida, Auburn, Georgia, the other contenders are playing each other and may bump each other off. The LSU has a schedule that favors them, there's no doubt, but they also have something else that favors them, a lot of ability. <laughs> and Bill Arnsbarger seems to have put that crew together, and they really are productive, both offensively and defensively, right up in the top of the Southeast ranking. Excuse me. Second down 15 from the 43. Incomplete. Adams has had a hard time catching the ball today. One of the passes earlier bounced off his hands and turned into an interception for Georgia. Ransel just kind of lays it out there. He usually puts a little bit more on the ball than this, I'm sure, but he had to get some altitude on it to get it over the leaping Kenny Sims. Adams breaks his concentration just at the last moment. Doesn't put the ball away, and it slips out of his grasp. Third down, 15, Kentucky from the 43 of Georgia now. It's Georgia 30, Kentucky nothing. 7.57 remaining in the game. You see the Randall statistics. The key statistics are the two interceptions. Just tried to get it out here to Weary, but Weary was checked at the line real well, and there was some good quarterback pressure by Greg Waters, forcing Randall to throw it a little bit early. And they'll have to punt the ball away once again. By the way, uh, you know what happens when Kentucky's football team loses its second game of the year every year? They start talking basketball here in Lexington. There's some folks talking about SEC basketball in the elevator coming up, as a matter of fact. And I always get a kick out of uh, Kentucky basketball as you look at Jimmy Harrell, who has a 76-yard TD return on a punt today. Uh, they always say they're going to have a down year, much like Vince Dooley in Georgia. That's what they're saying here in Lexington about Kentucky basketball this year. Here's Calhoun, very high, good hang time. Going to hit it to 10. Got an opportunity to be down right at the one-yard line, and number 80, Mark Wheeler, finally fell on the ball down there, and Georgia has to line up in their end zone. But a little case of too little too late here. Paul Calhoun's excellent punt, but Georgia leads 30 to nothing with 7.40 remaining. This is Turner, Network Television. Big old ham, you telling me it's quitting time? <laughs> yeah, started on 30 acres and you're just a pup. I'd say both you and this place have done a bunch of growing since then. The Red Man Reaction. Satisfaction. The secret of the new luxury is science. 
this efficient turbocharger is now available in all new Chrysler LeBarons. So now you enjoy LeBaron luxury with the power of a V8 and the efficiency of a Ford. Indeed, you have never been moved like this before. The new turbocharged Chrysler LeBaron. Quality. Backed by the Chrysler Protection Plan. This is the new science of luxury. Your Atlanta area Chrysler Plymouth dealer is making great deals. See yours today. Seven minutes, 40 seconds left in this game. Georgia with a 30 to nothing lead. We'll have the ball first down 10 at their own one yard line following Calhoun's punt of 55 yards. Now James Jackson in at quarterback for Georgia. He's the freshman, wears number 14. Hands to Andre Smith who gets about a yard. Don Urano makes the tackle for Kentucky. And there's a new player in the game, or actually he's in and out of the game, Victor Perry, number 77, Brian, number 78, Mac Bryan. Georgia making some offensive line substitutions now. 61 is Keith Johnson, the big 270-pound senior who's playing with a sore back, as he has been all year. Georgia with a last-minute substitution, and... Andre Smith has to sprint to the sideline to get out in time. He does. And out to the eight-yard line goes Lars Tate. Georgia hopeful for just a first down here so they can maintain possession to continue to run out the clock with their 30 to nothing lead. Georgia shuffled some players around this year we as we talked earlier. Mike Weaver, former defensive lineman, now on offense. And it's not the first time that Vince Dooley has stolen from the defense to, to uh, shore up his offensive line. Mike Wilson was an All-American, used to be a defensive lineman. Joel Parrish in 76, also an All-American, an offensive lineman that used to play defense. There's James Jackson running it out close to the first down. Don Urano with the stop on the freshman from Camilla, Georgia. And there's number 18. Kevin Dooley for Kentucky. No doubt we will see him the last series for Kentucky if they get the ball back. He came in last week and that lost to, uh, to LSU and engineered two touchdown drives. They like the look of that young man, a freshman from Cincinnati, similar to Bill Ransdell in many ways, the way he plays. He's 6'2", 200 pounds, exact same size as Ransdell. They'll come in and mark off to see if Georgia has the first down. Looking at Georgia's schedule, they'll go to 6-1 and one today. We'll watch that measurement together. First down, and Bulldogs keep it. And lead here 30 to nothing. There, Don Smith of Mississippi State has thrown a 58-yard TD to Mordecai, the wide receiver, and Mississippi State leads Auburn 7 to nothing. Georgia first down, freshman quarterback James Jackson in there. Officials still have timeout done. Then we're looking at Georgia about to go to 6-1 and one on the season, 4-0 and oh in the SEC. And Georgia will have next week Memphis State, a non-conference game at Athens, and then Florida and Auburn. So it's going to be right down to two games for Georgia. No question about it. Florida and Auburn, both strong, aggressive football teams, and it's going to be a real battle. On a first and 10. And tailback Lars Tate out to the 19-yard line. Both teams do have three timeouts left, so Kentucky could stop the clock if they want to, but trailing three to nothing, they won't stop it uh, probably. It's 30 to nothing, Georgia over Kentucky. Go, D! Come on, keep your play! Come on, D! It is second down to Georgia from the 19 of Kentucky. Lars Tate. Picks up the first down, I believe. Once again, it'll be close to it. We talked to uh, Jerry Claiborne about the Southeastern Conference race. A lot of people have picked the LSU. We asked, asked him what he thought about it. Well, I think right now the LSU has the uh, driver in the driver's seat uh, because they uh, they're two zero and one, and uh, they've got Alabama, Mississippi, and Mississippi State left. And I think that uh, Auburn and Georgia and Florida's schedule is tougher uh, as they go down the, the final games because I think that they might beat each other. First down 10, handoff to the fullback McCluskey out to about the 27-yard line. McCluskey's been a real workhorse for Georgia here today. Played well on special teams and run the ball quite a few times. Had a couple of long gainers. Has 84 yards carrying the ball, and Jerry Claiborne has reasons to 
won't be fingernail biting, finger chewing this time. He's disappointed with his second straight big loss in a row. I'm sure he feels his team can be competitive. Uh, they, they had a couple of tough breaks early on. The touchdown, the, the fumble that turned into a touchdown can be an emotional letdown. Then a couple of poor punts turned some things against them early in the first possession of the second half. An interception, and uh, that really nailed the coffin shut at that point. And it's been a hustling, aggressive, upfield Georgia defense that's, uh, that's kind of bottled up the Kentucky offense. Well, now Vince Dooley is substituting heavily once again. We see freshman Greg Williams at tailback, freshman Randy Jackson at fullback. Williams 23, Jackson 47, both played late in the Vanderbilt game last week on a third down five. Here's James Jackson from Camilla. He's got it, Bob. Look at that arm. There's Freddie Lane. He's gone goodbye. The line of scrimmage was the 28-yard line. 72 yards. James Jackson with his first collegiate touchdown pass. We talked earlier about how strong his arm is. Watch the arm on this little quarterback, only 5'10". They run two patterns out of this set, an out and an out and up. This obviously is an out and up. Kentucky has an inexperienced defensive back in there. They're trying to save their starters. They don't want anybody getting hurt. And Caldwell chases Lane in the end zone. Good throw by Jackson. 36 to nothing, Georgia, with 328 remaining in the game. And Butler comes in again to attempt his 13th point of the afternoon. Butler now has 330 points in his career, shooting for the NCAA record of 356 career points held by Tony Dorsett. This is Turner, Network Television. Pass off to Sonny's Real Pit Barbecue, because we have something special for you. A painter's hat from Coca-Cola for only 59 cents with any food purchase and jumbo soft drink. You get that delicious Sonny's Barbecue, a cold Coca-Cola, and to top it off, this painter's hat at a special price. So come on in to Sonny's Real Pit Barbecue for food, a Coke, and a painter's hat, but only while supplies last. Sonny's, cause Sonny's makes it all taste right. My can do checking is free and pays me interest. And believe me, that really helps. With can do checking, I don't have to worry about being nickel and dime to death with service charges. Besides, a nickel can come in handy. I get cash wherever I see the avail sign with this card. Can do, can do. this great arm here of James Jackson and the great blazing speed of Freddie Lane. He's probably got the best arm of uh, any active quarterback that Georgia has right now. Probably just a read pattern. If Lane didn't have it on the outside, he was supposed to turn it up. I can't believe that Georgia would be throwing takeoffs with three and a half minutes left to go in the game ahead 30 to nothing. So it's probably a read pattern, just an option, and that's how it developed and you run to the open area. 37-0 Georgia, 3.28 remaining in the game. Here's Gillespie with the kickoff. It may be headed out of bounds again. He's trying to angle it into the end zone and out of bounds, but misses a little bit short. And they'll mark it off five yards and bring it all the way back. And his special team kickoff coverage folks won't be very happy with Rusty's attempt to hit it in the corner of the end zone. Here's the scoring drive for Georgia that time. Not really much to it. 99 yards. They started at their own one, you may recall. Eight plays, of course, the key, the 73. Now they call it a 73-yard official touchdown uh, from uh, Jackson to Freddie Lane. They probably have a finer group of receivers at Georgia now than they've ever had, I would assume. People that can run and catch the ball. They're also hustlers downfield blocking, but they're, all of them can get deep. A Hockaday is more of a possession receiver, but you take... Archie, Blaylock, Osborne, and Lane can fly. It's going to come down to Logan. Bobbles it, but picks it up again. Tries to find his way outside and does. All the way to the 49-yard line of Georgia. Some backup special team players for the Bulldogs. 
don't get the job done as well as they'd like. Randy Jackson with the tackle and an excellent kickoff return by number 25, Mark Logan. The problem finding the handle on the ball. But while he's trying to get a grasp on the pigskin, some of his teammates are getting some bulldogs on the ground. Makes a move and heads up the sideline, beats the tackle of Will Jones there. Finally dragged to the turf. And number 18, Kevin Dooley in at quarterback for Kentucky. He threw two touchdown passes last week. Completes this one over the middle to Logan. To the 46-yard line of Georgia. Boswell with the tackle. Boswell has done just a marvelous job for Georgia this afternoon. Nine tackles replacing the suspended Bill Mitchell. So what a good job has been done by number 44, Steve Boswell. And there's Kevin Dooley. I said two touchdowns last week. You see zero touchdowns there in our graphics. That's correct. He engineered two touchdown drives when he came in late in the LSU game. Second down, six. Number 94 is Wyclis Loveless, who makes the stop. He's from Cluiston, Florida, the freshman, number 94. They told us he was playing well. You see the man from the home of the big bats, Wycliffe Lovelace. Breaks it clean and takes Dooley to the turf. Good pass rush. They've got four down linemen that can get there, and Bill Lewis gets them in stunning games and, and works them free. Georgia is creating a lot of pass pressure without blitzing, and that's a, the dream of a defensive coordinator. 159 remaining in this game. A little screen to the left side, and Higgs goes down hard. The freshman from Owensboro hit instantly by Jim Auer, who's a senior Georgia defensive lineman from Blackwood, New Jersey, getting some playing time today. Clock continues to tick, and it will bring up a punting situation again, and this will be, I believe, the 10th punt of the day. Yes, that's correct. The 10th punt, 11th punt of the day for Paul Calhoun. It bobbled over on the far sideline, number 16 or 17, number 17 with the ball. And when you get to this point of the game, the Georgia roster does not include that youngster. <laughs> so he doesn't have to have his name mentioned on the air after the fumble. Kentucky maintains possession. There's the man who got the ball for Kentucky. Number 95 is Matt Stein, a defensive end. 109 remaining in this game. Georgia 37, Kentucky nothing. Kentucky does has a, have a chance to try to break the shutout here, thanks to the special teams play. Oh, down hard. Donald Chumley is the man with the sack of Kevin Dooley. Two times he's been knocked down since he came into this game. This telecast is authorized under broadcast rights granted by the Southeastern Conference. It is intended solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, rebroadcast, or retransmission of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game in whole or in part without the express written consent of the Southeastern Conference, the Turner Broadcasting is prohibited. Well, all about I can say from a Kentucky point of view today is there's been nice weather, Tim. It certainly has. And I'd like to thank Jerry Eisman and Terry Strock for the time they took with us, Bob, explaining their attacks and... Also, George Hafter and Bill Davis from the Georgia Bulldog crew. They've got to be proud of this Bulldog football team. Now, Vince Dooley's job is going to be to try to keep these players to keep their feet on the ground because they certainly do have some momentum, and their talent sure, certainly is coming to fruition here. It's really developing, and it's, it's reaching a point where they're going to be tough to beat. Craig Sager and Paul Horning will join you on most of these stations following the game with the football action report. Not only scores, but highlights from action around the country, SEC, but of course action from all over the nation today. Full Saturday afternoon of football. Late October, 50 seconds remaining in this football game. It'll be second down, 17 Kentucky from the 29-yard line of Georgia following the sack. Those must be some uh, Georgia t-shirts that have been brought up here when they say buzz off text. Georgia Tech playing Tennessee today, by the way. That pass 
incomplete at the 26-yard line, and Kevin Dooley just getting leveled again. Mark Logan, the intended receiver, number 25, blocked 42, and it stopped on the incompletion. Sims and Chumley penetrating the pocket, forcing Dooley to get out of there. The offensive line from Kentucky up until this point had really played pretty well. Uh, Petroiak and Prince Reichwein, Johnson, Shirtlip, the leader. They've had their problems today. Here comes Kevin Dooley now, the freshman. And there is Jake Richardson. We hope that young man's right knee will be okay. A sprained right knee for nose guard Jake Richardson. yard line the ball falls harmlessly to the ground it was intended for Phillips and speaking to the ground Dooley picks himself up again now let's watch this hit on Kevin Dooley as people follow the ball sometimes they don't catch the aftermath of hanging on to that big skin that wasn't too bad he's kind of got bumped to the turf sometimes that's why they wear those flak jackets you know, Kentucky's only converted third down situations into first downs one time out of 14 attempts today. Ineffective on those crucial third down situations. This is Weary. Out of bounds at the 10-yard line. That'll stop the clock with 28 seconds to go. 17, by the way, we mentioned earlier there for Georgia UCM, and that play is Michael Williams. He is not listed in the Georgia Press Guide or on the Georgia roster. They're going to have to include him in there if he's going to be put in place in the ball game. Be my suggestion. Does not officially exist. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be first down goal from the 10 for Kentucky, trying to avert the 37 to nothing shutout. 28 seconds remaining in the game. Henry Harris was the first man in on Kevin Dooley. Dooley ducked out of the grasp of Harris, but then came the rest of the Bulldogs. Now Kentucky's calling timeout. They have one remaining after that. They'll try to get that ball into the end zone with 20 seconds remaining. We call this a pride drive for the University of Kentucky. We've seen University of Georgia with two real blowouts here the last two weeks, just clobbering Vanderbilt 62-35, and now even a bigger win in that sense, 37-0 over Kentucky with 20 seconds left in the game. Yeah, I think so. I think Kentucky's got a stronger defense than Vanderbilt, plus you're on the road. And the job of a football coach is to keep his team's mind on the game, and that's something that Dewey probably had a little bit of, a few distractions this week. He had Kevin Butler getting hurt. They were concerned about that, and and also the situation with Billy Mitchell developed. And, uh, Jerry Claiborne trying to bring his football team back, trying to make them believers, trying to make them believe that they can compete with the Georges and the Auburns and the Floridas of the SEC. And he's got good frontline people here, but when injuries start to accumulate, he just doesn't have the depth yet. Well, the injury to the Smith brothers, Larry and Jeff, certainly hurt that Kentucky defensive team. On a second down, 16. Incomplete. Eric Pitts was open, but under intense pressure, Kevin Dooley just couldn't get the ball to him. Dooley went down again that time. Waters was the guy pressuring him that time. But down to 16 seconds left in the game, and it'll be third down. And here's some scores from around the Southeastern Conference this afternoon. Let's have a look at what the action is. Tech by one over Tennessee at halftime. Looks like a pretty good one going on in Atlanta, Georgia this afternoon. Vanderbilt leading Ole Miss 16 to 7 in the second quarter. And Mississippi State with a two touchdown lead over Auburn. Oh my goodness. Oh gracious. my. Kentucky touchdown, number 19, Cisco O'Brien, his second touchdown grab of the year. And with 10 seconds to go in the game, the Wildcats of Kentucky avert the shutout. This is close. He takes it coming across, and here comes Georgia. They're coming after him. You see Brantley blitzing in there. Dooley sits in there, got some patience and some poise. The ball on its way. Bryant goes down and makes the catch. Touchdown, Kentucky. Michael Willis, Will Jones, Michael Williams, young Georgia defensive backs in there late here in the ball game. And Bryant took advantage of that and gets the touchdown grab. Here's Joe Worley. 
seats here. Most of these folks are leaving over to catch races number seven and eight over at Keeneland. The only people still in the stadium are at the right end. If you pan the camera down to the right side, you see a whole lot of red shirts. The Bulldog fans have elected to stay in the stadium. I guess we're not going to pan down to the right, but trust me, they are down there. There they are, the Georgia Bulldog fans. They came up here and enjoyed the hospitality of Lexington, one of the most beautiful parts of the nation. Here in the bluegrass region. <laughs> Quite a few Georgia fans are here. They, they took every allotted ticket. The Bulldogs send back Blaylock and Freddie Lane to take the kickoff from Joe Worley. And it's 37-7, Georgia over Kentucky, with only 10 seconds remaining in this game. Bulldogs go home to entertain Memphis State next week. And that, folks, won't be any easy encounter. Memphis State 5-1 and one going into today's action. And, and a lot of good football players. They're expecting five or six of their folks to be drafted in the first two, two rounds of the NFL draft. Memphis State can play with just about anybody in the country. That'll be a tough preparation job for the Bulldog coaches. Tony Mangrum got it at about the 20. Goes down at the 21-yard line. Blocked to four and stops there for the teams to change. So... Georgia will simply fall on the ball and run out the clock in this game. We're hoping to talk to Vince Dooley, by the way, as soon as this football game is over. His team 6-1 and one in the top 10 in the national polls. Probably move up some this week after this shellacking of a good Kentucky football team, depending on the out outcome of the other top 10 teams in the nation. Georgia, by the way, one of the few teams in the country, matter of fact, the only team in the country to be ranked in the top five each of the last four years. First and 80, fifth and 81, fourth and 83, fourth and 84. They'll move up in the polls this week. Greg Williams runs out the clock for Georgia. Final score, Bulldogs 37, the Wildcats of Kentucky 7. This is Turner Network Television. Presenting the many places of new avail. New Avail lets you use almost every 24-hour teller machine almost everywhere in Georgia. Amazing New Avail. You've never been closer to your money. May I help you? I need a tape player for my car. Hey, I've seen that guy on TV. How'd you find him? I saw your ad in the Southern Bell Yellow Pages. That's great. Race driver. So I knew right where to find you. And then the ad kept you from racing all over town. Yeah. <laughs> Let your fingers do the walking in the Southern Bell Yellow Pages, where big winners come on strong. Kale Yarborough, right? No, but I have run into him. Well, Doug Flutie, of course, one of the leading candidates for the Heisman Trophy, has a pretty good afternoon. This is a touchdown pass to Troy Stafford. And B.C. is now leading Rutgers. More on that game a little bit later on. The other Heisman candidate we're watching today is Keith Byers. He's the running back for Ohio State. He has 139 yards. Two great players we're watching. We sure are. And uh, I would say right now at the halfway point, I think before today started, I think Keith Byers, who's leading the nation in rushing, of course, I think he has a little bit of an edge. Today, though, I think Doug Flutie's already thrown three touchdown passes. He's ran for one. I think it's going to be a uh, two-way race the rest of the year to see who wins it. Keith Byers better get his legs in gear. He's trailing Wisconsin right now. More on those a little bit later on. But let's go back to Commonwealth Stadium for an interview after today's game. Back at Commonwealth Stadium, Georgia defeated Kentucky 37-7. And we have Vince Dooley down on the sideline. Coach Dooley, this is Bob Neal and Tim Foley in the booth. Uh, first of all, your reaction on this kind of victory over a tough defensive Kentucky football team. Well, I, did, I thought we played very well. I thought we played perhaps the, uh, the most complete football game uh, to date. We played very well defensively, and we played very well offensively. I was surprised that we were able to move the ball as uh, well as we did on Kentucky. 
Uh, they normally don't uh, give up the big plays, but we made some big plays, and uh, I was uh, even more pleased with the fact that Kevin Butler uh, was able to kick. How is his leg now after that workout he's had this well, afternoon? Well, it's, uh, it's probably sore. I'm going to go in and uh, talk to him in just a minute, but he's sore. But I think uh, the adrenaline started flowing. I didn't know he was going to kick at all until I came out uh, after the warm-up, and I was talking to Coach Claiborne, and he was telling me how well he was kicking, and I said, well, I didn't even think he was going to be able to play. He says uh, he thinks that he's ready to play. He said, but on the other hand, I might not advise him. Uh, Coach Dooley, obviously a big win over Vanderbilt and here in Kentucky. Now you've got to go home and play Memphis State, a tough team, a non-conference team. That must be a tough preparation job for you and your coaches to keep these youngsters up. I think it's going to be very difficult. Uh, week after week, we continue to play teams. Uh, now, schedule is ranked either one or two in the country. It's very, very difficult. And uh, uh, we're playing Memphis State uh, right before Florida and Auburn back-to-back. -back, and that's... Uh, that's a tough assignment. It's traditionally been tough, and uh, Memphis State uh, this particular year can play with anybody in the country, uh, maybe one of the top teams in the country. If not, it maybe should be in the top ten. I don't know, but uh, I do know that it's going to be a very, very difficult week for us uh, playing Memphis State prior to our conference games with Florida and Auburn. Congratulations on the win here today, Coach Dooley. We'll let you go and catch that team bus and the airplane back. I know it'll be a pleasant trip for you. Thank you very much. Coach Vince Dooley, Dean of Coaches in the Southeastern Conference with his 167th career victory here this afternoon. And the Georgia Bulldogs expected to have a down year, go to 6-1. and one. They'll be moving up in the top 10.